Welcome back. And we were discussing within our context of atomic theory, the atomic mass and weighted averages of isotopes. I want to start with something with which you should be familiar, your grades. In our class, our tests are 50% of your grade. Your labs are 30% of your grade and your quizzes and homework are another 20% of your grade. Now, that would be the analogous to the percent or, or to the weighted average, the abundance of that, not weighted average, the abundance. Now, let's say on your tests you have a 92 because you're really good about doing your test corrections. Labs can get tricky, but you've worked hard on that evidence section and you have a 94 and you've done a great job with your web assign and so that's a 98. Now, to calculate your grade, we would multiply that by 0 0.50. Most of you do that intuitively. And this by 0 0.30 and this by 0 0.20. Now, if we did that, we would get your overall average. I'm not going to do that calculation. But I wanted to show you how when you did a weighted average, you automatically divided that by 100. And that's what we'll be doing to get our isotope masses. So this is a pretty tedious one in a sense, but I think it gives you a good idea. Many, many substances have quite a few isotopes associated with them. And this is for tellurium, a material we don't deal with much, so I thought it would be fun to do. And you just have to be a little bit careful with your decimal points here. What we're going to be doing to get the atomic mass is we're going to take the isotope mass times the abundance, but we're going to change that abundance to a fraction. So we're going to divide by 100. So instead of having a total out of 100, we're going to have a total out of 1, much like a percent compared to the mole fraction idea. And we're going to divide that by 100 and get 0 0.0246, and this is 0 0.0087, 0. 0461. So instead of a percent abundance, what we're doing here is giving you a fraction abundance where the whole is one. Now, once I have done that, once I've converted all those numbers into the fraction, then what I'm going to do is simply multiply them by their mass number. Now we'll talk about the fact in a minute that not all mass numbers will be whole numbers like this, but let's work with these lovely whole numbers for now. This would be times 123, times 124, 125, 126, 128, and 130. So we do all of that multiplication. I'm not going to do that individually. We have calculators for a reason to simplify our math. But what we would then do is add all of those up. Remember, atomic mass is the sum of all of these. And if we added all of those up, you would get a value of 127.72 atomic mass units. And that's what would be put on the periodic table, or very close to that, the actual on the periodic table is this. The other thing I want you to do is be able to estimate roughly what the value should be. And you notice that you know two thirds of the weighted average is 128 to 130. So we would have expected it to be much closer into this range anyway than what we have. So you want to learn to estimate. This is not easy to estimate exactly, but I want you to start getting that concept. Now, what if we needed, instead of the atomic mass that would go on the periodic table, what if the unknown instead was our percent abundance? So in this case, rhenium has two naturally occurring isotopes. And I don't know what it is about this PowerPoint, but when it comes into Mimeo, I'm missing just a little piece of data there. It tells us that the average atomic mass is 186. 
and I looked up a little bit better number than what you have. I wanted to see if we could get it a little bit more exact to make a point. So we're going to call that 186.207 atomic mass units. Now there's two isotopes. We would call it RE185, and I looked that up for you as well. And the actual is 184.953. Now you may be wondering why it's not an exact number because earlier I told you that the mass number was a count of protons plus neutrons. And so why aren't we using 185? Well, here's the two issues that are involved here. A neutron doesn't really weigh exactly one in the relative scale. It's 1.00866. A proton is equal to 1.00728. Now, in addition, there's something, that difference between the 185 and the 184 is also referenced as a mass defect. This gets a little bit more into the physics of this that uh, we don't cover in our class. And there's a binding energy involved that causes our masses to be different than what we expect. So this would be the actual for the 185. And for the 186, or excuse me, 187, we have 186.956 AMUs. Now, <clears throat> to, excuse me there, let's, I want to get rid of this because let's take a look then at how we would calculate a percent abundance. Now, you're likely going to do this with only two elements or two isotopes excuse me not two elements and so let's take our rhenium mass which remember was 184.953 now we don't know its abundance so i'm going to put an x there and then i have 186.956 times y it's not likely that the percents are exactly or the fractions are exactly 50 50. And then this was that given that I put down for you. That's 186.207. There we go. Now we have one equation and two unknowns, which not so easy to solve unless we wanted an infinite number of values that would work for us. So we need some other relationship between x and y. And since we are assuming these are the only two naturally occurring isotopes, and I likely got this information on Wikipedia, and we all know that we can trust everything on Wikipedia, so let's call that an assumption. I, I think that in instances like this, uh, it's probably a good one. Now, the exact numbers I actually got from a website that has a lot of periodic tables on it. And I can get you that website if you want. And it's full of great information on elements. Now, here's our key issue here is x plus y has to equal 1, right? The sum of percentages is 100. The sum of fractions is going to be equal to 1. I'm going to move those over just a little bit there. 186.956. So x plus y is equal to 1. You'll see why I moved that in just a minute. Now, there's a whole variety of ways to do this. You can do, use a matrice, you can graph it, uh, you can do the method of substitution, you could solve this for y and then plug in up there. But when there are two values, when one of the equations is such a simple equation like this one is, I like to use the method where I'm going to multiply this by a factor, then I'm going to add the two together. Now, if I multiply by one by a factor, I have to multiply every value by a factor. And in this case, I'm going to multiply it by minus 184.953. Then when I add these together, that will eliminate my x term. I could have eliminated my y term. I like this, it leaves um, it leaves me with positive numbers by and large, 184.953. Whoops, squishing that in there for you. I hope you got that. Now, these terms cancel when we add it together, so I don't have to worry about my x term anymore. And the y term becomes 2.003y, 
is equal to, and if I take that mathematics there, I would get 1.254. And when I divide both sides, I find that y is 0 0.6261. Well, that was the fraction abundance, so that means that the rhenium 187 has a percent abundance of 62.61%. Not really worried about sig figs at this point. Uh, we can deal with that another day. And then the rhenium 185, because these have to equal 100, percents have to equal 100, fractions have to equal 1, this would be 37.39%. So that's how we would do it for the percent abundances. Now, the next video is going to start delving into the math, some of the mathematics of electromagnetic radiation that we need, and then finally moving into atomic structure. So for now, this is signing off. <laughs>